place that the child of God calls heaven. And <laughs> heaven is the city of God, church, tonight. It's the city of God. And I want to deal with just a couple things here tonight and, and some reasons that uh, we should have a desire to want to go there. And uh, does everybody here tonight have a desire to go there? Amen. Amen. You have a desire to go to heaven tonight. I got a desire to go to heaven. Amen. Amen. You say, now, I said going to heaven. Now, I said, now, I don't really look at, uh, I'm prepared to die, but I ain't running out in front of a garbage truck or, or jumping off a cliff to die, but I'm prepared to go to this city of God. I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready today? If you are, praise the Lord then. Praise Amen. The Lord. Praise the Lord. If you're ready, praise the Lord. Give him some glory tonight. Give him some glory tonight and praise the Lord and thank God that we're ready. You know, we, we, sometimes I think we get so wrapped up in, in this thing about church and this and that and this and that. and that, We forget about the big picture. We forget about the big picture. We forget about what's in store for the ones that love the Lord. Those eyes not seen, ears not heard what's in store for them that love the Lord. And there's a place that uh, it, it, that's, uh, it's not Chatsworth. It ain't a Dalton, amen. It ain't Daytona Beach, Florida, amen. Amen. It's uh, called the city of God. <laughs> amen. That's called heaven. That's the city of God. And so I think we ought to get excited a little bit about the city of God. And here, I'm going to give some reasons why. We'll just read a couple verses here, and, uh, and then we'll bring the message tonight. The Bible says in Revelations chapter 21, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he that will dwell with, him, dwell with him, them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse 4 here. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, Amen, this is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God and he shall be my son. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Father, for these seven verses. And we ask you to bring clarity with the help of the Holy Spirit tonight. Let us just get a little glimpse, Father. Oh, Lord, just give us a little glimpse tonight. And help us through the help of the Holy Spirit tonight. We'll thank you and praise you. Give you all the glory for everything. For we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you, uh, for standing and reading of the word of God. You know, tonight, you know, when we look at heaven, the city of God, you know, the first thing we ought to understand tonight that and in, in order to help us tonight that we have a hope. You know, we have a hope tonight, church. We have a hope. It's, uh, it's, uh, it, the Bible teaches we had our, if we had our hope in this world only, we'd be miserable. We've had our hope only here. But we have a hope be outside of this place we call, uh, wherever we want to call it, earth, whatever you want to call it, this place that we live in now. And, I, and I'm thankful that there's something today, church. Listen, you may not be looking much for many things. You may be, most people work, go to work, and they start out early in life, and they go to work, and they look for in retirement. They look to get to the place where they can retire and that's a great thing there's nothing wrong with that but here's the thing tonight church I'm glad that I, I've got a, something to look forward to uh, outside of retirement outside of getting old outside of getting uh, tired in life but I've got a, a, a hope of a place called eternity forever a place called heaven and I'm going to live there for eternity forever amen I'm not going to ever have no more sickness as the Bible said in, in verse 4 I'm not going to have no more pain thank God there ain't going to be no more dying there amen all the former things, what former things? These things down here that we deal with every day, all them's not going to be there. All them things going to be left outside the gates. Thank God today that we're going to a place where all that's going to be done with. And you know what they ought to do? 
Amen. You know what we ought to do? The church, we ought to, we ought to, uh, ain't nobody going to get too excited in a, in a Baptist church, but you know what we ought to do? We ought to get up and kick our shoes off. We ought to get up and jump up and down and thank God uh, that we have a place called heaven prepared for us. Amen. Amen. We ought to be excited about that. Amen. Now look, church, if I told you tonight that they, that we had a, 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 a box back there in the back of the, in the, in the vest of you, wherever, back in the church somewhere, and it had a gift for somebody, and, and when you come in, we all give you a number to draw tonight, and it was a number, <clears throat> everyone received one. Hey, man, everybody would get excited about that, wouldn't they? Everybody get excited. Hey, hey, don't get, now don't, now listen to me. Don't think that you ain't watched Ed McMahon on television and, and see him going to door to door, knock on that special door and said, you've won $10 million. What did he do? Yeah, yeah. They go crazy then, don't they? Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, won't we? You know what? Hey, guess what? Let me knock on your door. Hey, man, you got a place called heaven tonight. Got a place called heaven tonight. Hey, man, you got a place called... Mom, get them scream. Hey, man, get them shout. That's right. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. You got a place called heaven. It's worth getting excited about, ain't it? A place called heaven tonight. Boy, boy, Ed McMahon or anybody else jumped up on your doorstep, amen, and knocked on your door, you'd say, oh, praise the Lord, I've been praying for you. Hallelujah, I've been praying for the increase to come. Boy, I watched so-and-so on television last night, and he said, if I'd give $10,000, boy, I could expect 100000 back. But guess what? God's good, and he'd give me $10 million, oh, Ed, and he'd hug him, wouldn't he, amen? But well, the preacher can get up and preach about preach about heaven, and boy, it's hard to get an amen. Amen. Thank you, Maud. You better watch Maud. She'll have to break a leg there or something. Amen. Amen. But here's the thing tonight. Look here. Look here. You know, when we see the scriptures, when we see through the scriptures, that teaches us about heaven. It tells us about heaven. And I'm thankful for that tonight, that the scripture gives us, amen. Ain't you glad for your blessed book? Ain't you glad for your Bible tonight? Yeah. Ain't you glad? You know why? Amen. You know what? Church, listen. This is the road map. Amen. Amen. Me and Doc go travel a lot, and we got to take an atlas, whatever you want to call it, with us. We ain't got that fancy thing yet. They call it, Lee Croy's got it. You punch in GPS. When everybody leaves, it's got them GPSs. Punch in heaven. Hey, when you leave, punch in heaven and see which direction you can go. Amen. When we get them GPS is going, you got one, Brent. When you get them ready to leave, everybody's got them. They all got them. Punch in heaven and see which direction it takes you, amen? Amen. So there's got to be a direction, amen? And the Bible gives us a clear direction to heaven, amen? A clear direction to heaven. Thank God for that, amen? Look here in Hebrews chapter 11. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 9 and 10, the Bible says that Abraham done something. Abraham looked for it, amen. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go up into a place which he, uh, after receiving for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went, and not knowing whether he went. And, the, and verse 9 says, And by faith he sojourned in the land of promise, amen, as in the strange country, amen, of dwelling in the tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob and the heirs of, uh, with him in the same of the promise. For he looketh for a city which habit a foundation whose builder and maker is who? God. God, amen. Abraham looked for it, amen. Abraham looked for it, and thank God for that. Jesus promised it in John 14, verses 1 through 3. Amen. He says, I have prepared a place for you, and where I am you shall also be, amen. Also, John wrote about it in, in Revelation chapter 1 here. He says that he's talking in our text here that there's a place there, amen. He says, I, I, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and the first heaven and the first earth were past away and there was no more sea and I John saw the holy city amen I saw the holy city amen so look John looked for it Abraham uh, looked for it amen Jesus promised it so thank God that we've got a, a, a hope today that we're going to get there one day amen and we're going to get to that place he's prepared for us a place called heaven today church and I think that ought to excite us and get us uh, uh, really excited about what we got plans amen amen we all make plans Amen. LJ, 
last week or a week, two weeks ago, planned to go to, uh, to uh, Pigeon Forge or wherever, Gatlinburg, and they, and they looked forward to going. I'm sure they did. We all we got plans one of these next week or two to go to Panama City. We got some plans to go do that, and then we're looking forward to going to do that. Amen. But you know what? I'm planning to, every day and every moment of my life to plan into, since March the 12th of 1998, since the Lord saved my soul, I've been planning to go to this place called the City of God. The city of God. I've been planning to go there. You know, some things that we ought to think about. There's some things there in this place called the city of God that, uh, that will be missing, church. That will be missing there. You know, the Revelations chapter 21, verse 1, speaks of, of the separation, no more sea. No more sea. And I've mentioned this many times. And, we, and I enjoy when I, go to the, when I go to the Florida to get to see the, the sea, to, see, to, to get my eyes behold upon it. There's something about it. When we, I mean, when we first went to Florida, the first trip we ever made down, we went the closest we could to get down there to Jacksonville. And we got there. The first thing I wanted to do was look at the sea. I wanted to look at the sea. That's what we're going to look at today. That's what God's promised us through his word that we can have a hope in today. No more sea. What do you mean today? Sea separates land from the water. That's what a sea does. That's what the sea does. And guess what, church? He's talking about separation. He's talking about there's going to be no more death, amen. Amen. There's going to be no more death in the, in the city of God in a place called heaven. There's going to be no more death there, amen. Amen. He promised that through the scriptures. I thank God for that, that there'll be no more death when we get to heaven, church. But that's special to me. You know what the Lord Jesus Christ used on me to get me under conviction? You know what he used? Death. He used death to bring my attention to him. He brought me, drawed me to him, as the scripture says. He drawed me to him. When he came to me, he started drawing me to him, and it was about death. Everything in my life was rosy sweet, amen. We had a little bit of money over here in, in, uh, in, in the bank or whatever and had a little sock that had $2 in it, amen. But we had a car that was paid for. Our house was paid for. My garage was paid for. Didn't owe nobody no money. Didn't owe nobody nothing. We was happy as a lark. Me and Dot was just happy as we could be doing whatever we want to kind of do, whatever it was, going through life, just simply going through life as you casually, casually go through it. And then all of a sudden, uh, uh, something starts uh, uh, speaking to me about death. Something starts speaking to me about death. Well, what about it, old boy? What about it, Mr. Gary there, uh, two cent, two shoes there, buddy? What about it there? Well, what if you was to die? What would, what would happen to you? And I started realizing then that this city of God was a true and real place. It was a real place because it was the God that I have prayed to, the God of Abraham, Isaac, amen, and Jacob, amen, was speaking to Gary MacPherson. He was speaking to me in the terms of death. He was telling me that it's appointed once for a man to die. And guess what, Gary? One out of one's going to die, and it's you too, amen. And so I started thinking about that. I started thinking about that. And what did it start doing? I wanted to start looking in. Amen. Amen. I wanted to start getting me some tickets. I wanted to start making me some rev rev uh, 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 res reservations to a place called heaven. Amen. I wanted to start thinking about a place called heaven because God had promised there would be no more sea. But most of all, most of all, most of all, I found out that I was a sinner, Brent. I found out that I was a sinner. And I needed to be saved. And I needed to, the only way I can get to that place that I am the way, the truth, and the life. The only way I could get there was go through God, to go through the Lord Jesus Christ, to go through him. So I found out <clears throat> that I had some things, amen, that I could trust in. I had some things that I could have a hope in today. That there be no more sea. That there be no more sea. You know what? I don't know how I'm going to leave here, but I know I'm going to die. But I have no more problem with death. Oh, I know I'm going to die. I don't... It's going to be strange because I ain't never experienced it. But the Bible says there'll be no more sea there. Amen. When I die here, I'm going to wake up there. Amen. And I ain't never, ever going to have to worry about dying again. Amen. Ain't that enough to praise God for? Amen. Ain't that enough to thank God for? Hey, every one of us is going to die. It's appointed once for man to die. But you know what? When I get to heaven, I ain't going to die no more. Amen. The dying's over with. Praise God. The dying's over with. There'll be no more dying up there. Praise God for that. Amen. Also in Revelation chapter 21 verse 4 it says there'll be no more suffering there. Anybody had to suffer through life? Anybody had to suffer through life? I thank God. I thank God that my, my light afflictions work with this for a moment as he talked to Paul in Corinthians. Amen. But they worked it for a far greater exceeding joy. Amen. 
Amen. You say, what do you mean, preacher? Well, if Christ be for you, who can be against you? Amen. And I know the afflictions of what I was going through, but just for a moment is what the scripture says. So the suffering I went through, I counted all joys, he said. Amen. And you know, some of us have a more severity of suffering. You know what? Some of us do. Some of us have more severe. There's been a lot of people that's had very, very hard times from the time they was born. You know what? You know what we ought to do tonight? This city of God that he promised us, we ought to get excited about those that ain't had to, had to suffer, had, had, that haven't had, like, I mean, some of the families have been with it like tonight. Some of them are a little harder going through life than other folks are. The ones that are going through life that ain't having to go through them things, you know what they ought to do? Hey, man, they ought to get up and shout and praise God that they ain't had to go through no suffering like that, hey, man. Hey, man, can I get a witness there? Can I get a witness there? Hey, man, if you ain't never went through no suffering, you ain't never had to go through some affliction, you ain't never go through all them things, we ought to thank God that we haven't went through them things because guess what? You could be going through them. Amen. You could very well be going through them. Hey, Amen. And, you, and now guess what, church? You say, preacher's gone crazy. Yeah, that's all right. I, that's okay. But here's the thing. I'm crazy in love with the Lord, and I know what he can do for me. You know what? I might have some hard suffering tomorrow. Amen. Some hard suffering may come tomorrow. It may come the next day or the next day. But thanks be to God that he promised me through the word of God uh, that he'd be with me. Amen. That he'd help me through them afflictions. Amen. The Bible teaches there'll be no more suffering there. Amen. <clears throat> the, uh, Revelation chapter 21 verse 23 says that there'll be no more sun there. Amen. Because the Lord Jesus Christ will be the light. Amen. Amen. He'll be the light. Thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Don't you, ain't you glad there won't be no more sun set? I don't like to drive when the sun starts going down and it's just in between that dark and, and light time of the evening. King of Heart, you know, you say, what do you mean? I, I was just a little child and I still didn't like it because it seems that there's a, there's a glow or something, whatever, not a glow, but it uh, needs to be a glow, but there's a, a, when the darkness and, and the, the light starts getting dark, they say, well, you can't hardly see. I don't know about anybody else, but it's hard to see that. So I'm glad that there'll be no more sunset there, amen. He'll be the light and there'll be light all the time, amen. He'll be the light all the time, amen. <clears throat> Most of all, too, church, tonight, Revelation 22, 3 says that there'll be no more sin there. I don't know about y'all, but I don't, like, I don't like sin. Since I've become a Christian, I've been introduced to the word sin. Before I was a Christian, I never did worry about it. I didn't worry about sinning. I didn't care. We'd give a rip about nothing. I mean, I, I cared. I cared for my family. I cared for whatever things and stuff going through life. Yes, I did on that part there, but I never had anything that bothered me about a word called sin. But guess what, church? You know, after I got saved... Uh, sin seems to want to follow me around. You know what that is? Because Satan wants to get you to do what? He wants to get you to sin. Now, I know for none's righteous, no, not one. None of us are outside of Christ. But does anybody here tonight deal with anything called sin? Or, or are, we all, uh, all, are we all done arrived? Have we done got all cleansed and everything? Amen. Or, or do, we, do we deal with anything called sin? Anybody here be honest enough to say, I deal with it? My hands are up, church. My hands are up. I have to deal with it on a daily basis. That's exactly right. And I'm thankful that God said he provided a way, amen. Here on earth, don't have to wait to get to heaven, amen, to get forgiveness for sin. He said, when the veil was rent from top to bottom, I had access to go right in. And if I go right into the throne of God and ask him for forgiveness, guess what, church? Amen. He forgive me, amen. He forgive me. Amen. I have a little bit of that here. But thanks be to God, when I get to the city of God, there'll be no more sin. Church, amen, that haunts us. Amen. You know what? If you don't, if you don't realize about sin and you can just continue to sin, I don't know what you're going to do when you get to the city of God. When you get to the city of God, I know the Bible said there'll be no more of that there. But think about it, church. You'll be thinking about it here. You'll be thinking about it here. When we do sin, it's bringing approach on God. It's bringing an open approach. You're hanging him on the cross afresh, is what the Bible says. You're putting him back on the cross afresh. I don't know if that bothers you, but it sure does bother me. It sure does bother me. It sure does bother me. So I'm glad and thankful tonight that I'm going to a place where there'll be no more sin. Amen. Amen. Revelation 20, verses 1 through 3, and then on into 10, it teaches there'll be no more one that causes sin. His name is Satan. Amen. He's got a record for him. He's got a place for him and his followers. <laughs> and it ain't going to be no more him. Amen. 
Amen. We ought to get up and shout in time. Amen. Hey, we sang, they sang a song, they shout in time in heaven. Amen. There will be shouting time at the Gothic Baptist Church tonight. Amen. That there ain't going to be no more Satan. Amen. Amen. R- running around trying to uh, do one thing this, do one thing that, try to trip you up this way, try to trip you up that way. There will be no more Satan. Amen. Be no more. No more of him. Done with him. Amen. Have you ever, you know what? There's a lot of things that we're done with in life, ain't they? Hey, oh, shouldn't we be excited about being done with Satan? I am. I'm excited, I'm excited about that. He'll be no more haunting me, hey, amen. He'll be no more uh, trying to mess me up, trying to jack me up, trying to mess me, get me up lo- lopsided. So some things that will be missing there are these things I spoke about, church, tonight. You know, it talks about the material things. It talks about the measurements there. But the most thing I want to speak tonight is about the main attraction there. Hey, amen. What is the main attraction there? I know we got family there. I know we got loved ones there. I got a grandfather there. I got a daddy there. I've got I've got grandmother there. I've got some a uh, uh, brother there. I've got some family there. I've got some close friends there. I've got some people that's died in Christ and they went on to the city of God and they're there. But you know what? All that's great. I'm going to get to reunite with all them. It's a wonderful thought. It's a wonderful, wonderful thought. Amen. And it is. But the main attraction should be only and only the one person that provided every bit of this for us. That the Lord Jesus Christ will be there. Amen. 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 I'm glad I don't have to take a ticket. I'm glad that where he is, he said, absent from the body to be present with him. I'm glad I ain't going to have to take a ticket to get up there to, to the new Jerusalem to see him. Amen. I don't know how he's got it fixed, but you know what? There ain't no big screen. There ain't no thing that we've ever comprehended in the mind. And our minds can't even comprehend what the, what the Lord's got in store for those that love him. We can't comprehend how all this is going to be. And that ought to excite us. Amen. Because we're going to get to see the Lord Jesus Christ because he will be there. Amen. He'll be there. Amen. <laughs> He'll be as a, a lover to welcome us home. Amen. 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 Has your daddy and mama ever met you at the door when you was going to school? And you, and because and, and, they loved you and they met you at the door. And you know what? I remember, I remember just a few f- things that some of the family members, when I come in, they'd have a little cup of milk sitting there. One of them little old, uh, snicker bars sitting over there. And boy, that just excited me that they thought about me coming home from school and there was a little glass of milk, Noah, and a Snickers bar or whatever it was, a Reese cup, what it was, a Reese cup sitting there. They was excited I was coming home from school, amen, amen. That's because they love me, amen. There's a person called Jesus Christ. He loves you, amen, amen. He's got more than a cup of milk waiting on you, amen. He's got more than a Reese cup waiting on you. He's got, he's got some things that you ain't even been in, that you can't even comprehend to think about in store for you. Have you ever thought about the splendors of heaven? Amen. The ball, the Bible teaches about there's a wall of jasper there. Amen. Amen. It ain't Jasper, Georgia, neither. Amen. I'm talking about the city of God here. Hey, at the end of the day, we know to go, go, go home, go to bed, don't we? Amen. Amen. We ain't gonna go to bed. We ain't never gonna sleep. We ain't never gonna have to worry about sleeping up there because it's always gonna be daylight and there's always gonna be something to do up there. Amen. Hey, man, there's gonna be always it's gonna be the grandest attraction there ever was. Now, we more excited about what the world's got to offer us. More excited about what the, girl, the world's got to offer us. With all the glamour of the world. All the glamour of the world. The next day to get up. The next job to go do. The next day to go to sleep. The next day to get up. The next day to go to sleep. The next day to get up. I don't know about y'all, but that plan, that plan's all right. And it's called life. That's what Doc tells me. That's a wonderful plan. It's all right. But I'm thankful that God has got another plan. I'm thankful that he's got another plan. And his plan's far better than anything I've ever heard of down here. You know, I think tonight it would be appropriate to say this. Would be some things that will be missing there. You know, will you be missing there? Will you be missing there? You say, what do you mean, preacher? I'm going to heaven. Are you? Are you? You know what? I've talked to you about 25 to 30 minutes here about this place called the city of God. I know in my spirit, only one I know here tonight is about old Gary. It's Mr. Gary. I don't know nobody else here tonight. Everybody else says they are. Everybody else, I see it every day. Everybody else says it. Everybody else says it. But you know God's have prepared a way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And the only way we can go to this city of God is to be prepared. You just got to realize that you're lost. And tonight, church, tonight, church, you may be here, you may be listening, you might be lost. And, and you might want to have this place, that, uh, this city of God.
The only way you're going to get in is ask God to come into your heart. That's the ticket you get, and ask him to come into your heart and forgive you for your sins. Ask him to ask him to say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I need you to come into my heart and forgive me for my sins. I will trust you all the remaining days of my life, and I will try to serve you with all the remaining days of my life, and I will make you Lord of my life. If you're willing to do that and believe that, I believe you got born again. I truly believe you got born again. LaCroix Auto Sales, 800 McFarland Avenue in Rossville, Georgia, where we have easy financing, small down payments, payments as low as $50 a week, a large selection of late model and old school used cars. At LaCroix Auto Sales, we buy cars too, also offering used car parts, tires, our inventory changes daily. LaCroix Auto Sales, offering you cars, trucks, and SUVs. Come on out to LaCroix Auto Sales, 800 McFarland Avenue, Rossville, Georgia, 423-645-7402. AANA Drain Cleaning, located at 501 North Glenwood Avenue in Dalton, Georgia, 706-226-1267. Your professionals and experts in the cleaning of all household drains, also covering any commercial and industrial drain cleaning needs you may have. We do septic tank pumping and grease trap pumping. Tom and Eddie want to thank the people of Whitfield County and the surrounding area for being able to serve them for over 30 years. Call AANA Drain Cleaning at 706-226-1267 for all your drain cleaning and septic tank needs. Dalton Vacuum and Power Tool, locally owned and operated at 207 West King Street, downtown Dalton, Georgia. Meeting your complete vacuum needs. Selling both residential and commercial vacuums. Backpacks, central vacuum, shampooers, and steam mops, along with all supplies, including belts, bags, filters, rainbow fragrances, specialty shampoos, factory and custom-made shop vac hoses, attachments, and all hard-to-find parts. We sell and repair the Amish-made heat surge heaters. Open Monday through Thursday, 9.30 till 5, Friday, 10 till 3. Dalton Vacuum and Power Tool, 207 West King Street, downtown Dalton, Georgia. Thank you for watching our service tonight. I'm Pastor Gary McPherson at Agape Baptist Church. We're located at 165 Bettis Road in Chatsworth, Georgia. I'd like to invite you to come out with one of our services and be with us. We have our worship service on Sunday morning and at 11 o'clock. We have our Sunday school at 10, and then we come back and meet that afternoon for our evening service at 6 o'clock. We have our prayer night service on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. We love the Lord, and God bless you, and come be with us sometime.